Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And let me start out, uh, Madam Secretary, with the full faith and credit issue that uh, my colleague Senator Wyden has raised. We are in agreement that we need to protect the full faith and credit of the United States. Uh, frankly, as I indicated in my opening statement, the problem that we see on the Republican side is that it's all tax and all spending increases in terms of the administration's approach to this. And while uh, you and the chairman just discussed a number of concerns you have with Republican ideas with regard to how to deal with this, the bottom line is that we must stop trying to solve this problem by massive new spending and massive new taxes. So we have some disagreements about how to deal with this. What I would ask of you is, at this point, the president has refused to negotiate with Republicans on fiscal restraint policies that they believe need to be put into place with a, with a new extension of the debt ceiling. We must engage in negotiations to get over some of these disagreements, and this new debt ceiling resolution must include fiscal restraint. We've got to get some kind of attention to this. I think the American public is crying out for Congress to pay attention to this issue and put fiscal restraint in place. Can you commit at least to negotiate with Republicans as we try to work forward on finding some aspects of fiscal restraint to put into the debt ceiling discussion? Senator Crapo, the president has indicated that he considers it critically important to have a sustainable and responsible fiscal path. And he's put on the table in the budget um, a number of ideas, many ideas about how to grow the economy while also cutting deficits. And this is a matter that he is very prepared to discuss and negotiate with Republicans, but it can't be a condition for raising the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling simply must be raised, and to put at risk uh, the full faith and credit of the United States and to threaten to cause an economic and financial catastrophe isn't an acceptable well, I, um, Madam Secretary, requirement. I, understand, I interpret your answer to be that you're very willing to discuss the president's budget, tax increases, and increased spending, but you're not willing to discuss, with regard to the debt ceiling discussion, any actual fiscal restraint in terms of spending control in the United States. Now, if I interpreted it wrong, I'm sorry, but we've got to get negotiating on more than just whether the president's budget is the right approach. There are other ideas, and we need to be engaged in it. I just hope that you'll take that message back to the president. The president has indicated that he would welcome discussions about the stance of fiscal policy. All right, I appreciate that. Let's move uh, quickly to the uh, SVB crisis in, in the banking industry. Can we agree, at least as a starter, as we try to understand how this is all playing out, that the issue here in terms of risk is uh, liquidity risk that we are facing in the system and that SVB had a, an, a liquidity risk issue? Well, there was a, a run on the bank. It had high reliance on uninsured deposits, and um, there was a massive withdrawal of deposits that led to liquidity problems. The bank had to be closed for that reason. So do you agree, then, that it is a liquidity risk that we're dealing with in this issue? Well, there was a liquidity risk in this situation. I, um, you know, there there will be a careful look at what happened in the bank and what initiated this problem, but clearly the downfall of the bank, the reason it had to be closed, was that it couldn't meet depositors' um, depositors withdrawal requests. Because their capital was, being, uh, was losing value and they were not able to access their capital, and, and I attribute that to the interest rate hikes that we are seeing in in the face of the inflation. Am I wrong in that? Well, my understanding is that the bank, um, to meet liquidity needs, had to sell um, assets that it expected to hold to maturity. And um, given the interest rate increases that have occurred since those assets, including treasuries and government-backed um, security, mortgage-backed securities, 
they had lost market value. All right, yeah, and we're on the same page on that then. I appreciate that. One other question with regard to the uh, bank failure, and a part, this is with regard to the efforts to get a private buyer to help solve this issue. Uh, regarding these uh, issues, the solution would have been to get a private sector solution that protected taxpayers, calmed the markets, and prevented the potential assessments from being inappropriately levity, levied against community banks. Uh, press reports have indicated that some, at the, uh, some of the FDIC board members may have slow walked the negotiations with regard to potential political backlash surrounding mergers and acquisitions. And uh, it was because of that that we were not able to move forward promptly with obtaining a buyer. Are those reports accurate? Well, this is something that uh, is a question for the FDIC, really, rather than me. But I, I know that the FDIC um, looked, looked for buyers, and a merger or acquisition is certainly uh, something that they were open to as a way to resolve the institution. All right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> very quickly, on the OECD agreement, uh, I'm very much opposed to it, and yet it seems to me that Treasury is uh, pushing for Congress to approve its approach to the OECD negotiations and is already giving uh, support to nations around the world in the OECD to tax U.S. profits that would be directly in contrast or in conflict with U.S. tax treaties. Uh, am I correct in that? 137 countries signed this agreement and see it as a way to put a floor on taxation of corporations and uh, multinational corporations and stop a race to the bottom. And the European Union has adopted uh, Pillar 2, the global minimum tax, and I, other jurisdictions are moving forward. My and question, we my feel answer, it's in the U.S. interest to adopt this. We have, um, we have proposed. Um, I understand, Madam Secretary. My time has expired, and the chairman's trying to get me to wrap up. I do want to make one more quick statement. Uh, I would like to express my concern about numerous proposals in the Green Book in the budget that we won't have time to get into here today. Last year, Treasury did not provide answers to these questions for the record responses for six months. And I just would like to ask you to pay attention to this this, this year and have your team respond to us promptly as we get questions for the record on this year's budget. Senator Grau.